In prior to bait scheduling, the priority of the process is determined according to the importance of the process. However, you also need to consider the period uh, of the process reappearing in the system because it also relates to the deadline of the process. Therefore, rate monitoring uh, scheduling arranges the priority of the process uh, as the inverse of its period. In other words, the frequency of the process uh, appearing. Note that this is a static priority because the period of the process is fixed. So if the uh, period of the process is shorter, that means the process is uh, occurring frequently. So I should give the CPU to, to that process more frequently. Therefore, it should have higher priority, whereas a process with longer periods can tolerate uh, delays. Therefore, the, uh, it will have lower priority. So let's, for example, uh, consider a system where we have two processes, P1 and P2, P1 appearing with period uh, P1 and uh, execution uh, time, the time required to uh, execute that uh, instance of the process as T1, giving as 50 and 20 seconds, for example, or milliseconds. And uh, similarly for P, uh, the process 2, the period and the time to execute are given as 135 respectively. So, since P1 has shorter period, we will give that higher priority. And uh, if you look at the uh, utilization of the CPU due to process one, that would be, uh, we would be uh, giving 20 uh, time units of CPU time in every 50 time minutes to process P1. Therefore, it would have 40% uh, CPU utilization, whereas P2 would have 35% CPU utilization. Well, if you look at the overall CPU utilization, then it would be 75%, uh, which is less than 100%. So it seems reasonable. And if we try to uh, apply this algorithm uh, on processes P1 and P2, uh, P1 and P2 becoming available both at t equals zero, we, uh, since P1 has higher priority, so you first give the CPU to P1. So for 20, uh, time units P1 executes, followed by P2, which is to execute for 35 time units. However, after it has executed for 30 time units at t equals 50, P1 appears once again because it has a period of 50 time units. So when P1 arrives, although P2 is not finished yet, since rate monotonic scheduling is a preemptive algorithm, it will preempt P2 from the CPU and the second occurrence of P1 from the second period goes into the CPU for 20 uh, time minutes. And when it is done, the previous execution of P2, that's remaining five time minutes, can now execute. This way, both P1 and P2 will meet their respective deadlines, both at 100. Because remember, since this was 50, it would be the second uh, period of uh, process P1. And similar thing uh, repeats uh, uh, as long as uh, the things are working. Rate monitoring scheduling is optimal. Uh, that means if a set of processes are uh, scheduled using rate monitoring scheduling, uh, they cannot be, sorry, if a, a set of processes cannot be scheduled using rate monitoring scheduling, there is no other static priority based algorithm. Pay attention to the word static here. That means the priorities are fixed. If rate monotonic cannot schedule it, no other fixed priority algorithm can do it. So it's an important uh, scheduling algorithm in, in those terms. However, Rate monitoring scheduling also imposes an upper bound on CPU utilization. That means using rate monitoring scheduling, you cannot uh, utilize the CPU above some limit. And that limit is given as n times 2 to the 1 over n minus 1. So if you have a single, uh, single process in the system, then you could use a CPU with 100% utilization. 
However, as the number of uh, processes in the system increases, the CPU utilization will decrease. And when n becomes very large, when n goes uh, towards infinity, it will be bounded with almost 69%. That means if you have a process load above 69%, rate monitoring scheduling will not find a feasible solution. So, for example, let's go back to the previous example, but slightly modify it. Earlier, the uh, execution time of P1 was 20. Now let's make it 25 and also reduce the uh, period of uh, process P2 from 100 to 80 so that uh, their uh, CPU utilizations now become 50 and 44, so the overall sum is 94, which is still less than 100. Therefore, it looks like we could schedule them. However, if we try this, P1 still has the higher priority. We'll start with P1. Then we continue with uh, P2. P2 executes for 30 uh, time units. And at t equals 50, it will be preempted for P1. Again, P1 executes 20, for 25 milliseconds. These 10 milliseconds remaining from here will be used here after P1 completes. But uh, P2 now will exceed its uh, period, therefore its deadline. And here we have a missed deadline. So that is the uh, problem with rate monitoring scheduling. And that's because the overall CPU utilization, although it was uh, still below 100%, with rate monitoring scheduling, we're not able to properly uh, schedule the processes. That's why we have missed a deadline at t equals 80.